Shalom Chavim. It is nice to get a chance to speak with you again. I apologize for the time that uh, I've been away, been quite some time. I'm doing a very much, very in-depth study right now. Uh, I've been working on the Rapture series. I did kind of steer away from that a little bit here the last uh, couple of weeks here in my studies. Uh, although, let me say this, it's really going to tie into that though, because I am uh, very concerned about the covenant that the Vatican is, is working with Israel right now. I'm concerned about my people and them being lured into this. Um, Shimon Perez, uh, he recently visited the Vatican and uh, now the Vatican has got plans from what a friend of mine emailed me, an article of going, uh, the, either the representatives or the Pope himself going to Israel in June. Um, and it's escalating. And not only is it escalating there, but I'm also finding uh, rabbinical brothers that are making covenants uh, among the peoples in other parts of the world as well. Now, that I know from a Christian perspective, it'd be like, you know, well, Steve, what's wrong with that? But you have to understand, God commanded us in Exodus 23, Chapter 23, near the end of the chapter, he said, make no covenants with the people. Now, he was talking about when Joshua, when, or when Moses was going to take the lands, the land of Israel, and he said, when we go there, he said, don't make covenants with anybody. Now, I know that Christianity is based on Jesus, Yeshua, who definitely, he was a Jew, he was a Torah Jew, he, was a, he kept Torah, kept the law, kept Sabbath. Uh, his family, from what we have on historical documentation as well, James was a Torah abiding Jew. Uh, very much, there, we, there was nothing that this man did wrong. And then he was crucified, and the Romans took him and killed him. Uh, and, and quite honestly, we have to admit as Jews, we handed him over. We played our part in this. Um, I've gone into that before with you. I won't go into that in this particular video at this point. But, uh, the, but what I'm working on in very much depth uh, and where I got inspired from is from uh, Jeremiah chapter 50 and chapter 51. And I'm going to just show you a few little insights on this here because... By God's grace, I think it's even going to help the Christian view of the rapture because there's so many things that I'm tying in through these two chapters uh, with Isaiah, Zechariah, John out of the book of Revelation from the Christian Bible as well, Jesus' own words, uh, and uh, I believe it's, uh, what is it, Luke 24 or Matthew 24, one, I forget which one. Let me just share with you what that is, though, so you'll know. Uh, to kind of give you a little idea. Remember, he, uh, Jesus, Yeshua makes this comment. He says, and uh, I, I say Yeshua, Yeshua being the Hebrew uh, name for, for Jesus, not the Greek name, but Yeshua. He says, um, let me just see if I can find that for you real quick here. Um, he talks about there being wars and rumors of wars. Um, and then he, he goes into several other things. Um, Oh, gosh. And I'm not exactly sure where that begins at. I don't know. Yeah, here. Okay, yeah, verse 5, I think. For many will come in my name saying, I am Christ. Or actually, I'm the anointed one is what that means. And will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, when you read that, it kind of looks like this is a long period of time. Uh, I, I remember when I first read the, the, the Christian Bible, I would think to myself when I read this, wow, you know, this must have been like the Russian Cold War with the United States, you know, that must have been the rumor, rumor of war, but we never had one. And that's really the way I kind of thought about it. 
And I was reading one night in the book of Jeremiah, and while I was reading in Jeremiah, I found out something that surprised me. Jeremiah also spoke of this, of the rumors of wars. And as I began to see this, the Lord began to lay it in my heart to really study this closer. Uh, and I forget exactly which verse. I think that's in chapter 51, if I'm not mistaken, because I don't have my own Bible. Oh, here it is right here. Look at here. Uh, yes, in chapter 51, verse 46. Let me read you this here. And this will just give you a little insight on what I'm working on. And lest your heart faint and you fear for the rumor that will be heard in that land. A rumor will come one year and after that another year. A rumor will come and violence in the land ruler against ruler therefore behold the days are coming that I will bring judgment on the carved images of Babylon now this is fascinating to me because remember Daniel Daniel says that from the reading of books he knew two years when the time would come that his people would be delivered. And I haven't fully studied this out as of yet, but now when you read chapter 50 and chapter 51, you're gonna notice in 50, there's so much talk of the destruction of Babylon, the Chaldeans, etc. cetera. Um, but Babylon here is the Roman Catholic Church. It is going to be the Vatican in Rome. But what was fascinating is that when I begin to look at these verses here, such as the rumor, uh, a rumor will come in one year, and after that, another year, a rumor will come, and violence in the land. I couldn't help but remember the words of Yeshua and what he said there. And then as I really begin to search this out, I begin to notice the parallels, that when you begin to look in the Tanakh, we find these things answer. Like, for example, your horse riders. Your horse riders are written in Zechariah as well. The plagues, the vials. Uh, another good one as well, for example, when John speaks of and he writes about uh, Mystery Babylon, I believe in Revelation 18, as that's written at, he talks about how she dwells on many waters. Now, here's an interesting thought for you. In uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, in verse, um, it's hard to see when my glass is on, verse 13, oh, you, uh, excuse me, verse 12, for the Lord hath, has both devised and done what he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. O oh, you who dwell by many waters, abundant in treasures, your end has come. And yet, Revel and John speaks of revelation of the destruction of Babylon, and he says that she dwells on many waters as well. But in John's case, he tells you what the many waters stands for. Multitudes of people and nations. And so what I've been doing is I'm working on this, putting the different pieces of the puzzle together from the Tanakh, from the Torah, and dovetailing this in for you. And I'm going to take you through some here. And I'll probably use Jeremiah 50 and 51 it's kind of like a plumb line because it speaks about the destruction of the Vatican and the things they did and why they did, the time frame and everything. Uh, just to give you another little clue here that's really kind of nice here. Uh, chapter 50, verse 1, for, uh, excuse me, verse 2. Declare among the nations, proclare and set up a standard, proclare, do not conceal it. Say Babylon is taken, Baal is shamed, uh, Merodach is broken in pieces, her idols are humiliated, her images are broken in pieces, for out of the north of a, a north a nation comes up against her, which shall make her land desolate, and no one shall dwell therein, and they, uh, they shall move, they shall depart both man and beast. Now, interestingly, this is, I mean, all of this prophecy, okay, we know that, it's all prophecy, but you have to be careful when you read this, it's actually, even the prophecy is setting it in the future. If, if that makes sense to you. In other words, he's not declaring here that she's destroyed yet, but when you get into chapter 51, she's going to be destroyed. And then he goes into the way she's destroyed.
But here's how you know the time frame. Here's what's interesting. In those days and in that time, says the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, together with continual weeping, they shall come and seek the Lord their God. Now, don't get that confused with the weeping and mourning when they see the one they pierced of Zechariah. It's not the same. But what is this? He's letting you know that, 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 that the time is coming upon the earth that God is going to judge Babylon. And it's like, it's like you might look at chapter 50 and chapter 51 and maybe it looks at a space of 50 years or 60 years of Israel's history. And yes, Israel, both, he's showing you here what? Both houses, all 12 tribes, both the house of Israel and the house of Judah are going to come, what, continually. It doesn't say they're coming all at one time. They're continually, and yes, they are. They're continually coming in, and it's always tears of joy and weeping and mourning because they've been away from their homeland for so long. See, it's, it's little things like this that are so precious and so beautiful that are just, just hidden right here in the Word of God. And, you know, and then... Um, but let's say, though, when, but when you jump over here, for example, to verse uh, 19, or let me back up, yeah, verse, let's back up to verse 18. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of, God of Israel, behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria, but I will bring back Israel to his home, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, and his soul, soul, excuse me, his soul shall be satisfied on Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days at that time, says the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought, but there shall be none in the sins of Judah, but they shall not be found. For I will pardon them whom I preserve. Again, both houses of Israel, all 12 tribes returning home. And there's another one in here, and I forget where it's at. I'll just save it for when I take you through this whole uh, program here that I also find interesting because the prophet Jeremiah literally speaks of Joseph replacing Ephraim. And there again, John in Revelation in the tribal order that he gives of the 144,000, Joseph replace, replaces Ephraim. Uh, so the dovetailing of the books are very interesting. And uh, so I, I, I'll continue to work on this. I just wanted to take a little bit of time to share this with some things with you. Um, also, I'd like to mention a couple other things to you real quick. And that is, um, many of you have ordered the books. I mean, there's been a lot of books ordered from what I've heard, uh, just from the publisher as well as from us directly. Again, if you still, if you're interested in the book Yom Suf or Israel, are they still God's people? You can order that from us. Um, and uh, our, uh, uh, you can go directly online, israelreturns.com, and order the book if you would like. Um, we'll, we don't mind shipping it to you directly as well. If you'd like to help us with the ministry, we appreciate that as well. Uh, we covet your prayers, though, more importantly than anything. Uh, we are very seriously preparing to go back to the homeland. Um, now, honestly, I tell you, we're going for a visit I have no idea from there what the Lord will do. I really don't know. Uh, we'll just prayerfully consider as God leads what to do. Um, but the hour is tremendously late and my heart is burdened. It's heavy for the, for the people. And uh, I don't know what God intends to do. Um, but also before it slips my mind, I wanted to mention to you, there's many of you that have emailed me about the book Yom Suf and how it's blessed you, the things that you're reading. I get emails from you guys. Um, if you would take the time, you, even if you did not order either, either, either of the books from Amazon.com or Google or Barnes & Noble or whatever the case may be, uh, the books are available in all these different venues. Um, if you don't mind taking a little bit of time, go to these places and write a review, write your opinion about the book. Um, and hopefully it's favorable, but if it's not, that's however God leads you to write, just go ahead and write right away. I know on Israel, are they still God's people? 
Um, we've got a five-star rating on every one of these places. And one day we just happened to read the re remarks and quite frankly, I was really blessed to see uh, how much it's helped people, uh, especially uh, uh, when I speak about the 144,000, when I speak, uh, and, and, and for those of you, uh, somebody, and this is kind of interesting, somebody mentioned to me the other day, uh, you have a Watchtower link on your website, as actually to my wife's testimony, uh, is what that is. And uh, the book, Israel, Are They Still God's People, is in defense of Israel and those for replacement theology. So if you're looking for a book that deals with Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, I don't know if Seventh-day Adventists believe in replacement theology, but, uh, but, but I know the Jehovah's Witness people do. Believe it or not, the Vatican does, although they're claiming a different story right now, their whole history they've been against us. Um, but I would encourage you uh, to, to get that book as well, to do you some good. Um, but God bless you. We love you. Pray for me. I am doing everything I can to get this ready for you. And I believe it may answer more of your questions on the rapture. Uh, also, we were invited, I think it's going to be next Wednesday the 15th. Uh, there is a radio broadcast. And uh, I'll, I'll try to get you more information on that as far as the radio channel when I do the next uh, by, the, by this weekend at the latest and uh, to where you can listen to that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it'll be broadcast live. Uh, you can listen to it online. And uh, I've been asked to speak about uh, the rapture from the Torah. So anyway, God bless you and good night.